Curry Erotic Weissman back on TC Live. And remember this in September, Carlos Alcaraz turning New York into a teenage wasteland. Winning the U.S. Open to become the first man born in the 2000s to win a major and first teenager to reach number one in ATP rankings history. He's actually the youngest man to reach the top spot by over a year. Take a look at our young kings. Leighton Hewitt held the record before that. Andy Roddick, well, geez, he, he could sit from Sweeten's Cove when he got to number one. <laughs> we got Pistol Pete in there, Courier, and, and McEnroe as well. So what Carlos Alcaraz is doing, Jim, has never been seen before. Yeah, no, it's been remarkable to see his rise in the year. We knew he was good, but we didn't realize he would be this good this fast, right? Miami Indian Wells, we could see it coming on, but it really all clicked for him at the U.S. Open, possibly aided by Novak not being there. You have to put that in there as a factor this year. There's no doubt Novak's inability to play at a lot of his favorite places made it an easier rise, but Alcaraz's game is ready for the big time. Can't wait to see in 10, 15 years what we're talking about when we talk about his career. Andy, how about the fact he didn't even play in the ATP Finals and still gets no points there and the year-end number one? Yeah, well, there was nothing to defend. I mean, this kid's rise has been meteoric, and it he, he, he so obviously passes the eye test for someone who was going to win majors. Now, to get to number one that quickly, that's a different story. And as we look forward to next year, uh, I, I still think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't think Novak Djokovic is the best player in the world. But the number one ranking is Carlos Alcaraz. is well-deserved. Uh, it was unbelievable to watch this year. I wish so badly that he was in turn kind of mixing it up this week uh, with this group of phenomenal players. But uh, listen, we want health. It's He's got a long career ahead of himself. So hopefully he comes back healthy, ready. And I can't wait to see him match up with... Rafa and Novak and the guys that are going to try to claim that territory for as long as they possibly can. But what a gift to the game Carlos Alcaraz has been. He certainly is. And we got to show you this to get from the top 10 to number one, just 140 days. He got into the top 10 April 25th, reached number one September 12th. That is pretty, pretty, pretty good work. Yeah, it's Buzz Lightyear. And that is just so fast up the track. Safin at 161 days was also meteoric. But, uh, you know, Alcaraz is just remarkable that he's been able to do that so quickly. And he, and he seems like he hasn't changed at all. And that's the thing that's also great about him. The team around him, he seems like he's very, still very grounded and still knows he's got to get better. And that's going to be important for him to stay up at or near the top for a long time. And I have to do what his, his heroes have continued to do, which is add to their games, which is, it seems like he's kind of got it all already. But that's another <laughs> thing. It'll be fun to see what where he goes from here game-wise. I, I went back in the archives, Andy, for when Jim did it, it, and it was very fast. And you had won the Australian Open in 92. Yeah. And, and then you had these quotes. I was stressed out about it. I was very aware of the situation sure. when you went to San Francisco. Yeah, well, I, I also, if I didn't get it that week in San Francisco, there was a chance that I wouldn't get it because Ed Berg and I were really close battling for it in the way that, you know, the points go. You're defending last year's points. I was the winner of Indian Wells and Miami coming up. So it, it's a lot because you don't know if you're never going to get there. You, you know, you might even one day at the top of the mountain is a good day. So um, it's stressful. And for Alcaraz and Casper Ruud, they were playing not only for number one, they were playing for their first major title. That was something special to see at the U.S. Open mm. this year. Something they will never and can never take away from you. Andy, this ends an 18-year run for the Big Four, finishing as year-end number one. Two decades, nearly, of dominance. Yeah, it just, I mean, it just goes to show that those guys are selfish, Steve. Um, very, very selfish. Uh, keeping titles from, from the rest of us mortals. But, uh, listen, I don't know if we're ever going to see consistency like we've seen from the Big Three and the Big Four uh, over the last 20 years, you know, even when Pete was dominant in his run of his run of finishing number one in the world, he would lose third round sometimes. You know, he had a surface that he was definitely not maybe in the top five or top 10 in the world on. So, uh, you know, they completely revolutionized the game as far as consistency and, you know, the, the, the statistical metrics where they're making, you know, 30 some odd Grand Slam semifinals in a row. It's just absurd. And it took an all world talent like a Carlos Alcaraz, who is already a complete player. Uh, at 19 years old now we can get better in some places but we'd be nitpicking but what a talent Alcaraz is it's remarkable we, we talk about the big three being the greatest of all time and yet they never got to number one as teenagers something that uh, Carlitos was able to do